Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. However, I can help you if you follow along with me. The Bible and the Book of Mormon are the holy word of God. I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon. We can definitely talk about the Bible. Leave me a comment below and click the like button, y'all. Click that like button. It helps out. It really does. And today's number is 23 verses. This will be medium. Like Michael Jordan, number 23, y'all, number 23. Mormon Jr., chapter 4. War and carnage continue. The wicked punish the wicked. Greater wickedness prevails than ever before in all Israel. Women and children are sacrificed to idols. The Lamanites begin to sweep the Nephites before them. Verse 1. And now it came to pass that in the 360 and third year, the Nephites did go up with their armies to battle against the Lamanites out of the land desolation. And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites were driven back again to the land desolation. And while they were yet weary, a fresh army of the Lamanites did come upon them, and they had a sore battle, insomuch that the Lamanites did take possession of the city desolation and slay many of the Nephites and did take many prisoners and the remainder did flee and join the inhabitants of the city Tiancum. Now the city Tiancum lay in the borders by the seashore and it was also near the city Desolation. And it was because the armies of the Nephites went up onto the Lamanites that they began to be smitten. For were it not for that, the Lamanites could have had no power over them. But behold, the judgments of God will overtake the wicked. And it is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. For it is the wicked that stir up the hearts of the children of men unto bloodshed. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did make preparations to come against the city Tiancum. And it came to pass in the 360 and fourth year, the Lamanites did come against the city Tiancum, that they might take possession of the city Tiancum also. And it came to pass that they were repulsed and driven back by the Nephites. And when the Nephites saw that they had driven the Lamanites, they did again boast of their own strength. And they went forth in their own might and took possession again of the city desolation. And now all these things have been done, and there had been thousands slain on both sides, both the Nephites and the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the three hundred and sixty and sixth year had passed away, and the Lamanites came again upon the Nephites to battle. And yet the Nephites repented not of the evil they had done, but persisted in their wickedness continually. And it is impossible for the tongue to describe or for a man to write a perfect description of the horrible scene of the blood and carnage which was among the people, both of the Nephites and of the Lamanites. And every heart was hardened so that they delighted in the shedding of blood continually. And there never had been so great wickedness among all the children of Lehi, nor even among all the house of Israel, according to the words of the Lord, as was among this people. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did take possession of the city desolation, and this because their number did exceed the number of the Nephites. Which is very important for us to pause here for a bit, because there's a couple of things that come to mind that's important for us to understand. Go back to verse 4. Mormon Jr. is making it very clear to us here that the Nephites started this war, you can say. Now, again, the Lamanites in the very beginning, you can even go back to 600 years B.C. It was always the Lamanites stirring up and starting trouble. But also, if you read in the previous chapter here, Mormon Jr. chapter 3, you also see that the Nephites wanted to boast and be like, you know, we defeated the Lamanites, and then now we want to go back and seek vengeance. The key thing right here, what's being taught, again, verse 4, Mormon Jr. is showing us that we should not delight in bloodshed, as you see in the, pre, the go, ongoing verses after that, that the people have become so wicked, given into this type of wickedness, where they delight in killing. No one should be happy to kill anyone. But along with that, the Nephites going against the Lamanites, starting this little battle, you can say here, or this war, 
is the cause of them being destroyed in this instant, not the total destruction of them, but in this little battle, you can say. But again, as you see, the Nephites uh, eventually had another victory in which they started to boast again. And that's the thing, y'all. While we always say, give glory to God, be grateful for what you have, don't boast, never boast, y'all. And I know it's tempting. It's very tempting. You know, like if you score a touchdown, you make a three-point shot, you make an A-plus on your mathematics test or something that you enjoy or something you're happy about. You win a chess match, whatever it may be. The point is, in those moments, yes, you want to celebrate. You want to rejoice. But don't let it get to boasting where you start getting prideful about yourself. Always say a prayer, y'all. Thank God for what you have because it's always because of him. That's what the Nephites should have done in this moment instead of boasting about themselves. And as we're gonna see going forward, that's gonna to lead to their destruction. But ultimately, it's not just that. It's the fact that they turned their back on the savior. They decided to not repent. And that's gonna to lead to them all being wiped out. Verse 14, and they did also march forward against the city Tianca, and did drive the inhabitants forth out of her, and did take many prisoners, both women and children, and did offer them up as sacrifices unto their idol gods. And it came to pass in the 360 and seventh year, the Nephites, being angry because of the Lamanites, had sacrificed their women and their children, that they did go against the Lamanites with exceedingly great anger, insomuch that they did beat again the Lamanites, and drive them out of their lands. And the Lamanites did not come again against the Nephites until 370 and fifth year. And in this year, they did come down against the Nephites with all their powers, and they were not numbered because of the greatness of their number. And from this time forth, did the Nephites gain no power over the Lamanites, but began to be swept off by them, even as a dew before the sun. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did come down against the city Desolation, and there was an exceedingly sore battle fought in the land Desolation, in the which they did beat the Nephites. And they fled again from before them, and they came to the city Boaz, and there they did stand against the Lamanites with exceedingly boldness, insomuch that the Lamanites did not beat them until they had come again the second time. And when they had come the second time, the Nephites were driven and slaughtered with an exceedingly great slaughter. Their women and their children were again sacrificed unto idols. And it came to pass that the Nephites did again flee from before them, taking all their inhabitants with them, both in towns and villages. Verse 23. And now I, Mormon, seeing that the Lamanites were about to overthrow the land, Therefore, I did go to the hill Shem and did take up all the records which Amoron had hit up unto the Lord. And that concludes the chapter, and I'll wrap up with my testimony. I know that there is one God, be it the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are all united together. I know we should not be worshiping idols, which that could be famous people, celebrities, statues, stones, all those things are an abomination before God because he is our father in heaven. We are to worship only him and he loves us dearly. I also testify that the second coming is real and that the savior will return and that day will be glorious. It will be beautiful. It will be filled with peace, which is something we all Look forward to. I leave y'all with my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.